Okay, I have a PKA of plus 10. I don't want to give up my hydrogen. Okay, so this is the deal with strong and weak acids. Strong acids are very willing to give up their hydrogens, just like strong men. Hey, they give up their teddy, they give up their teddy bears, right? They just give it up, right? Weak acids, weak little boys don't want to give up their teddy bears. They don't want to give up their hydrogen. Do you guys see that? Okay, well, we'll get into this more in detail later. We're just laying the foundation for this right now, showing you what Bronson and Lowry theory is talking about, okay? So we'll come back to this. I'm gonna show you later how to tell which acid is a stronger acid without actually having to look up their PKAs. So you wanna make sure to pay attention to that later, all right? All right, you guys, so that was Bronson and Lowry theory of acids and bases. In just a second, I want to talk to you about Lewis theory of acids and bases to give you another way we define acids and bases, okay? But before we do that, let me mention one last thing about Bronson-Lowry acid-base reactions, okay? And in a Bronson-Lowry acid-base reaction, you take an acid, add it to a base, and what kind of products do you get, you guys? You get a conjugate base and a conjugate acid. You get a two-product reaction, one. Two product reaction, okay? And the reason I'm mentioning this is because, hey, for a Bronson Lowry acid base reaction, you get a two product reaction. And in a Lewis acid base reaction, you're going to get a one product reaction. So if anyone ever asks you to identify whether an acid base reaction is a Bronson Lowry acid base reaction or a Lewis acid base reaction, you can determine this by looking at the number of products. Bronson Lowry will give you two products, Lewis will only give you one. And you'll see this in just a second, okay? So do me a favor and go ahead and write next to Bronson Lowry that this is a two product reaction, two product reaction, okay? And we'll compare this to Lewis theory in just a second. Okay, so the second acid base theory we have is called Lewis theory. Lewis theory. I told you that Bronson Lowry theory defines acids and bases purely in terms of hydrogen, in terms of protons. Lewis theory now takes the opposite approach, and he's going to define acids and bases purely in terms of electrons. Okay, so a Lewis theory is going to define an acid as a, what do you guys think? Lewis theory is going to define an acid. That's his acid as a electron donor or acceptor. Lewis theory actually defines an acid as an electron acceptor. Electrons acceptor, okay? And check this out because with Bronson Lowry, we, with Bronson Lowry, we said that an acid was a proton donor. Here with Lewis theory, we're now saying that an acid is an electron acceptor. So they're kind of like flip sides of each other, right? Let's check out how we define a base then, okay? A base. And if an acid, according to Lewis theory, is an electron acceptor, a base is going to be an electron donor, right, you guys? They're opposites, right? Donor. Okay, so in a Lewis acid base reaction, what's going to happen is that a base isn't going to take something this time, it's going to share electrons this time. So a base is going to share electrons with an acid. Oops. With an acid. So before with Bronson Lowry, we saw that a base took a hydrogen from an acid. Here we're going to see a base is going to share electrons with an acid. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the general reaction up here. So you're going to take an acid, an acid, combine it with the base, throw in some equilibrium arrows here, and what's going to pop out is one combined complex. One combined complex. And you have no idea what this means yet, you guys, but you will in just a second. Okay, so let's see an actual example of this now. Okay, so an example of a Lewis acid, this would be something like 
ALCL3. ALCL3, a compound that has room for electrons to come in. And a base would be anything with a lone pair. Okay, so let's just say like uh, water, for example, H2O. H2O. Water has one, two lone pairs on it, right? Okay, so obviously it can be acting as a base. It's an electron donor, okay? But hey, how did I know AlCl3 is a Lewis acid? How did I know that it can act as an electron acceptor? Well, check it out. Whenever you're looking for a Lewis acid, something that can accept electrons, what you're really looking for is an atom that has room for electrons to come in, okay? Well, hey, what does this mean? Well, an atom is full when it has an octet, right? When an atom has eight electrons around it, dude, it's done. There's no more room for any more electrons to come in. But hey, an atom that has less than eight electrons around it, like AlCl3, it only has six electrons around it, right? Two, four, six electrons around it, right? So it's got room for two more electrons to come in right here. It's got room to accept electrons, meaning that it is a Lewis acid. Remember, a Lewis acid is just anything that can accept electrons. If you have room for electrons, you can accept electrons. So, hey, let me ask you, in our example, can water act as a Lewis acid? Does it have room for electrons to come in? No, right, all these atoms are full, right? Hydrogen's each got two, oxygen has eight. It's full, it's done, right? No more room for electrons. So it's definitely not a Lewis acid. But hey, it's got lone pairs on it, right? So that means it can donate electrons. Anything with lone pairs can donate electrons, can be a Lewis base, meaning that it's going to be our Lewis base, okay? So let's check out what's happening here in this reaction. Okay, so in this Lewis acid base reaction, what's gonna happen is that a base is gonna share its electrons in a lone pair with an acid. So hey, if you can imagine this, oxygen is like, hey, I need somewhere to store these electrons in my lone pair. Hey, aluminum, you've got some space right there. You mind if I share my lone pair with you? And he's gonna share those electrons with aluminum. We could draw that with a curved arrow. Okay, throw in some uh, equilibrium arrows right here. And this is gonna combine this acid and this base together like this. Draw this bond in blue to show that they got connected right there. And this is gonna put a plus charge on this oxygen and a minus charge on this aluminum, okay? So, hey, what did we see here? We saw a Lewis acid, a compound that can accept electrons. It had an empty slot for two electrons to go right there, okay? We saw this combined with a base. We saw it combined with H2O. It shared its electrons to combine with this AlCl3 to come together in this one combined complex. One combined complex. And if you notice here, there's only one product. For Bronson and Lowry theory, we had two products, right? A conjugate acid and a conjugate base. Okay, so you probably won't see too much Lewis theory until later on in chemistry, but it's good to introduce it to you now so that you see it side by side with Bronson and Lowry, the other way to define acids and bases, okay? All right, but mainly for right now, we'll be dealing